Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Nancy and we are going to do a card with Blue Night Rubber Stamps. This is called Good Morning Rooster and it comes with the large rooster on like the fence post here and then it comes with the smaller rooster. So um, I'm going to do a video with the larger rooster using some pan pastels today but um, keep an eye out on my Facebook and my Instagram. I'm going to combine the smaller rooster Maybe have it out front here so it looks like it's closer to us in the barn. And this is, combine this with the barn and silo stamp set, also from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. So I'll only do a video on the one, but I just wanted to let you guys know if you want to see some other ideas you can use that little rooster with. Um, check that out on my Facebook and my Instagram, Nancy Stamps 15 all right, so some new products I'm going to try out today. I'm using the Mini Misty because this is a red rubber stamp. I have taken out the styrofoam mat that was in here. Now behind my Misty here, I, I have taken um, the grid paper and I laminated it. And then underneath that, I put some sticky grid, which is some double-sided low-tack tape. Um, so I really don't need the magnet. So the magnet just kind of sits there. And then I'm using some new paper today. This is... Um, Strathmore pastel paper and this paper has a texture to it. it's very lightweight it's not a really heavy paper um, it says acid free heavy weight for oil pastel dry pastel drawings um, it says it's 80 pounds but it doesn't feel like 80 pounds to me in the traditional sense it feels a little lighter but it does have a texture to it kind of like watercolor paper but it's just not as thick so this one has a couple of different colors um, so it has like beige, oh, different shades of beige, a yellow, a darker beige, a gray, and then this is the blue, which I've already cut down to five and a quarter by four. I have my stamp ready to go, and I am going to ink up today with some archival ink, and that's because it dries fairly quickly. I'm using my Blue Knight Rubber Stamps nice, easy magnetic handle. This is the universal one, which is a little bit smaller, but when you stamp with this, you will not have to worry about, you know, see these ink pads are really small surface areas here. So they kind of get messy and you have a tendency, you could drop it. So there are two size, two sizes of handles. The regular handle, which I'll show you how much bigger it is. And it's just held on by very strong magnets. That's the regular handle or the universal handle, which is a little bit smaller. Works great if you have any oval sized um, ink pads. So... They don't come off. They hold it nice and sturdy. And I love these things because if you're somebody who has a problem with dexterity or arthritis and holding those on, um, or like I said, with that small surface area, it just makes it easier so that you don't drop the ink pad. And I'm going to stamp that a couple times. And I do have my paper all the way in the bottom corner there. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, when I take this out, I'm going to take out the whole piece with the laminated piece. Here we go. <laughs> it doesn't want to come out. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to put this aside because I may need to stamp with it again later. So we'll just move it over there. All right. So now what we're going to do is just color this image. And I'm going to use a combination of the pan pastels. I do have the pan pastels. Both sets you can get from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. There's the Sunrise Sunset palette. And there's also the Day and Night palette. Um, you get uh, 14, sh 14 shades in total. You get seven in each palette. But both palettes do have white. You do want to pick up when you're at the store... Um, a colorless blender that will help you out. And then there are some miscellaneous colors like um, some green, some pearls, and some uh, metallic colors as well. But definitely pick up the um, blender, okay? The colorless blender. I also have purchased these Stabilo Carbothello chalk pastel pencils. I was using chalk pa pencils, but I only have like a dozen of them. So this is 24 of them, and I will link them down in the description for you. 
um, but they're basically like chalk pencils and this will help us get a little more detail out of our image because we can't always add all the detail on some of the finer images so I thought these um, pencils would be a good combination with the pan pastels so let's start with the bigger images here this is the sunrise sunset palette and you would get um, most of the colors in here and when you order from blue night rubber stamps it is quite a value and let me tell you why each one of these pots is normally seven dollars so if you're getting seven that's 49 dollars this palette tray is normally uh 15 dollars i think on top of that and then you get a variety of different blending tools so i think you get four or five different blending tools with that which is another seven or eight bucks so you're getting a value ordering it from blue night rubber stamps because you get the seven colors um, and you're going to get, so you get actually these seven colors. If you don't see those three, you get these seven colors. So you're going to get red, orange, yellow, magenta, white, and then these two, I don't have the names right now, burnt sienna and red iron oxide, I believe. So, but check out the website. So you're going to get those. You're going to get the tray. The tray is going to leave you room to purchase three more additional colors. You don't have to store these with the lid. I do have the lid on my white just so it doesn't get contaminated. They stay pretty um, steady in the tray. The tray has a nice lid to cover everything up. And like I said, you're going to get a variety of blending sponges and tools. You get like four or five different ones that help you out with that. So quite a few options now they do have a couple of individual colors you can purchase um, or you can pick them up i found i think for me the best value is blick and I'll, i will link um, that down below for you but definitely if you're doing a starter pack you can't beat the value that you're getting from blue night rubber stamps they also sell these little smaller applicators which make it easier to get into the finer spots and you just want to make sure you have some paper towel off to the side. So let's see here. Start with this little rooster. This is orange, and I have orange shade, which is just a darker color of orange. So I'm just going to dip in there. And I am following the illustration that came with the stamp. So they come on these nicely laminated sheets and they have color illustrations on there so I can check and see, you know, how far am I compared to the artist. So if you're not really good at coloring like I'm not, <laughs> this helps to give you an idea. And then to clean off your sponge or your applicator, you just use a paper towel and wipe it clean. That's it. You don't need to use any special cleaning or anything like that. Uh, let me go in with some of this brown. And check out Blue Night Rubber Stamps has a YouTube channel where you can get more in-depth details on using pan pastels and some other stamping techniques. Um, you can see on the Blue Night Rubber Stamps blog and Facebook page, you can get some ideas from what some other artists have come up with. So a lot of um, ideas, imagery, you know, just so you can go back. If, you're, if you have a mental block, it's a great place to go and check out some ideas and get some inspiration. All right, so on this one, for example, if you ever feel like you just have too much color on there, you can blend that out. And it erases very easily. Because this is a highly pigmented, basically it's a chalk, it's not an oil base. Um, anytime you feel like, okay, I'm not sure if I like that, just go in with an eraser 
and this is just an electric eraser and you can erase that right away at the end of the day if you get some pigment on your hands it's really easy just a little soap and water washes it off that's what I like about this is it's pretty much mistake proof pretty easy to clean up anyone can learn to do it um, it's a very very easy way to color in your your photos your stamped images okay now his little feet are kind of yellowy that you know I might have to go in with the color pencils at this point because now we're getting into the finer details so yeah let me grab the pencils It was actually very easy to color. I think we'll add some clouds to this too. Because that took a whole uh, under 10 minutes. <laughs> Can't complain. Okay, so the colors around his face are pretty, pretty neutral. So instead of white, we're going to go in with this uh, cream color. There's no names on here. I think it's just the number. So it looks like number 105, which is, like I said, it's a cream color. And that's what we're doing, just going around his eye. Very simple to do. I'm going to grab the darker orange. I might need to sharpen these. They're brand new and they're just not super sharp. Well, that's really bright. that little bit of detail I can add very easily. And it layers on top of the pan pastels nicely too. Okay, that's nice. All right. Let me grab dark red here. This one is 325. I'm gonna go just kind of clean up his little, I don't know what you call this. What do you call a rooster mohawk? I'm going to call it rooster mohawk. This is 6.55. really complement each other. I'm really glad that I got these now. Okay, this is like a yellow ochre 690. with him I think he looks pretty good I mean maybe I can go into the stump here and add a little bit more shading my friend sunshine she has a couple of roosters I think she calls them Rudy one and Rudy two and she's always posting videos of them and so sunshine this one's for you <laughs> these just remind me of your little guys all right, so now I want to add some um, clouds, and I'm going to use the new reverse cloud stencil from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. So here it is. As you can see, I have already used it a few times. I'm going to go into my day and night palette, which is going to give us, again, seven colors. So you're going to get these seven colors here. These three are extras, and you can see I purchased a lighter blue, a colorless blender, and then there is a, a green bright yellow green um, shade that they sell so and oh you get you get um, you do get white with this palette so this is the extra one that I these four I added because this would be the place of the white all right so 
For this, I'm going to grab one of my larger sponges. They come in a variety of different sizes and shapes. They're called soft tools. They work very nicely. And I'm going to go in, actually, scratch that. We want white. So let's do that first. And then maybe we'll add some blue in. Because this is already blue. So it shouldn't be hard for us to add some of that white in. And I'm going to start kind of low and then build my clouds up as we go up. Because this rooster is up on his perch, right? That looks very nice. Not a lot I got to do there. All right. So we need a little bit of ground cover here. I'm actually going to flip the stencil over and it has kind of this jagged edge. And I think we'll put some green in there and kind of make it maybe look like some high grasses. Use this bright green yellow. We'll go from there. Look at how easily that color just went on. And we're going to layer it up a little more. Okay, there we go. Look how simple that was to put together. And just blow off any excess. Now I smeared his belly a little bit there so I can just go back in and um, either clean that up with one of my applicator tools which works very easily or I can go in with an eraser and erase that. Now, important thing is, is you wanna set your pan pastels. Um, these do not set, so if someone touches them, they could smear. So let me show you how to do that. I like to re-stamp my image, which is why I left it on this background. So we're gonna put him back in here. If you wanted to add a sentiment, now would be the time to add your sentiment. This does come with the sentiment, good morning, sunshine. So let's see, let's put it right here. Well, let me finish stamping my rooster and then we'll put that on there. Again, I wanna make sure that it's in the bottom right corner there. I'm going back in with the archival ink. Again, because it dries pretty quickly. And this is just going to help bring that image forward a little bit. That looks pretty good. I have two little boo-boos I want to fix. That's it. This, this little one on the belly here I smeared a little. Okay, sorry. My head got in the way. So you just go in with your little eraser and anywhere that you're not happy. That's it. It's so simple, you guys. All right, so I'm done with the rooster stamp. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to do the sentiment. Now, I don't want to stamp all of this and then find out my sentiment is crooked or it's not in the right place. So I'm going to use a little piece of either acetate or some spare plastic Um whatever you have, and I do have a little piece of plastic that I keep, it's a little heavier duty plastic. So I just lay that 
Again, right in that bottom corner. It's gonna protect my pan pastels from smearing, but it's also going to allow me to kind of line up my sentiment and see what I think about it. Pick it up. Now I can look on the misty door. There are some lines, but that doesn't always tell us if it's gonna be lined up correctly. So this is just a little practice stamping. So I'm just gonna take the ink, real light, practice stamping it on that plastic. Then I can look at it and say, hey, I like that. Actually, I do like that, that is straight. So now I don't need to do anything except remove the plastic. I can clean that off in a second. I'm gonna re-ink my sentiment. And stamp that down. I'm gonna ink it one more time because I do like it really dark. And that's it. That looks pretty good. So now we need to set this in place. I am going to remove it from my mini misty. There you can see that piece of a sticky grid that was holding everything down without having magnets get in the way. And I have a little spray box. And it's just a packing, it's a packing box from, I think this one's my favorite things. But Brutus Monroe boxes work really well. Any of you like your kit boxes that have a little lid, I put some extra paper towel down there. Again, being very careful, trying not to smudge anything. And then you can buy a matte finish. You can buy, actually, I'm going to use the matte finish. Um, there's all kinds of fixatives in the market. I know some people like to use hairspray. Hairspray is not recommended by Pan Pastels because it's not, um, it's not going to be archival. So I like to use Krylon Matte, Krylon Glossy. They sell the little shortcuts um, or they sell a fixative. And you can get that anywhere between $5 and $10 usually. And it's just a couple quick spritzes. That's it. You're going to put that somewhere. It dries very quickly. You want to keep it in a well-ventilated area, and then you're going to be able to put that on a card front. So very easy to do with pan pastels and some color pencils. I do like the paper. I said that was my first time using it, but I feel like the colors really kind of stuck a little easier. There was less smudging with it. So I just have to let this dry and then I'll have it put it on a card front and it'll be ready to go. If you have any questions, post them down below. I will put the links down below for everything that I use. The majority, the stamps, the pan pastels, um, the soft tools, you can pick all of those up from kitchen, I'm sorry, from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Sorry. And also if you wanted to pair this one with the barn, here we go barn and silo you can also get that from blue night rubber stamps the links down below for you check them out on facebook check them out on their youtube channel and don't forget to check out the blog so you can get inspiration from the other design team members thanks for watching guys and keep on stamping Bye bye